section 28 of modern magic this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by lucy park modern magic a practical treatise on the art of conjuring by professor lewis hoffman tricks with handkerchiefs part three there is another form of the same trick in which the handkerchief plays only a secondary part but from its near relation to that last described we insert it in this place it is generally called the flying plume for this trick you require two plumes as nearly as possible alike in appearance to the stem of each should be attached a loop of string or ribbon two or three inches in length you must also have a japanned tin tube of about twenty inches long and three in diameter on each end is fitted a cap of about two inches in depth one of these caps is perfectly plain but within the other is an inner cap made after the fashion of the middle compartment of the snuff-box vase see page two hundred seventeen the relative tightness of the inner and outer caps is such that if in removing the outer one with a finger and thumb some slight degree of lateral pressure is exerted it nips the inner cap which comes off with it but if the outer cap is removed without pressure the inner cap remains on the tube forming a false top on it within this inner cap which is internally about an inch and a half deep is glued the short end of a third plume similar in color and appearance to the two others the interior of the tube is divided into two parts by a longitudinal division also of tin running diagonally nearly from end to end the tube is thus divided into two wedge-shaped compartments the cap at one end giving access to the one and the cap at the other end to the other each being large enough to contain a plume see figure one one two representing a section of the entire tube and figure one one three giving a slightly enlarged view of the ends the tube is prepared beforehand by filling the compartment which is closed by the double cap with bonbons of various kinds the other compartment being left empty one of the plumes is concealed in the left sleeve of the performer as in the last trick these preparations having been duly made beforehand you come forward with a small shawl or a large handkerchief the tube and the second plume laying the tube and plume upon the table you request the audience to satisfy themselves that the shawl contains nothing you then ask someone to step forward and take care of the shawl which you meanwhile carelessly throw over your left hand immediately after taking hold of its centre with your right as before described and drawing the left arm away it is needless to remark to those who have followed the explanation of the last trick that the hidden plume is thereby brought under the shawl though being held by the loop of ribbon there is nothing to betray its presence you hand the shawl in this condition to the person who has volunteered to hold it requesting him to keep it at arm's length still hanging down next taking up the tube you open it at the plain or unprepared end and holding it mouth downwards show that it is apparently empty and ostentatiously place the plume therein and put the cap on in returning to your table you take the opportunity to reverse the tube and to lay it down in such a manner that the opposite end i e that with the false top may be turned towards the audience some performers do this by letting the tube fall as if by accident but this is in our opinion a clumsy and an artistic proceeding by gesticulating a little with the tube and announcing what you are about to do so that the audience may little by little become less certain as to which end you have just opened and by carelessly transferring the tube from the one hand to the other 
just as you lay it on the table you may make the change with scarcely a chance of detection even by the keenest observer you then say i shall now ladies and gentlemen make the plume which you have just seen me place in this tube travel into the shawl which that gentleman is holding while the tube will be completely filled with objects of interest for the juvenile spectators here you may possibly hear or if not you pretend to hear a murmur to the effect that the feather has already left the tube pardon me you say the plume has not yet left the tube neither will it do so until i give the command and so saying you take up the cap leaving on the false top the audience see the little bit of feather within which they naturally take to be the end of the genuine plume again you place the cap and after going through some appropriate magical ceremony again remove it but this time carrying off the false top with it it should have been mentioned that the tube is japanned in such manner that the eye cannot detect any difference whether the false top is on or off placing the cap with the false top within it on the table you come forward and pour the sweets from the tube while the shawl is on examination found to contain the plume some performers for the purpose of this trick use a tube with the false top as above described but open from end to end without the diagonal partition above mentioned before placing the plume in the tube which they do standing behind the table they secretly remove the cap at the lower end and allow the plume to fall through on the servante where it remains in this case there is no production of sweets but the plume having been produced from the shawl the performer removes both caps and hands the empty tube for examination cap magic laundry there is very little brilliancy either of invention or of manipulation in this trick but it is nevertheless generally very well received the performer requests the loan of half a dozen handkerchiefs taking care to accept white handkerchiefs only these he collects in a wooden box having somewhat the appearance of a good-sized tea caddy having got the required number he places the box upon his table and invites the attention of the audience to an ordinary tin or wooden pail this he fills with water and placing it in front of the stage takes the handkerchiefs out of the box and drops them in steering them about with his wand and making as much fun as he can by his pretended anxiety that they shall be thoroughly washed having kept this up as long as the audience appear to be amused thereby he wrings out the handkerchiefs one by one and throws them into a little shallow metal tub or pan japanned and about four inches in depth which his assistant at this moment brings forward for that purpose together with a cover after the manner of a saucepan lid and a pistol both of which he places carelessly on the table having placed the handkerchiefs in this little tub the performer announces that having washed them he will now proceed to dry them for which purpose he pours over them a little spirits of wine to which he sets fire after letting them blaze for a moment or two he claps on the cover your handkerchiefs are now dried ladies and gentlemen he says but i have still to fold and iron them it does not take very long as you will see taking up the pistol he fires at the tub and immediately removing the cover comes forward to the audience and requests them to identify their handkerchiefs which are seen neatly folded and apparently just washed and ironed within it the intelligent reader will have already guessed that the trick depends upon a substitution of handkerchiefs the box in which the genuine handkerchiefs are received has within it a movable flap between which and the back of the box the substitutes are placed when the required number has been collected this flap lets fall releasing the substitute handkerchiefs and at the same time covering the genuine ones the substitutes having been dropped into the pail of water 
the assistant carries off the box and behind the scenes damps and folds the borrowed handkerchiefs pressing them flat with a hot iron if available if not with a cold one the tub or pan which is used for the conclusion of the trick has an inner lining of a size as to fit tightly within it but about an inch less in depth the lid again fits within this after the manner of a saucepan lid but not quite so tightly as the lining itself fits within the outer pan the folded handkerchiefs are placed within this lining and the lid placed on or rather in it the two together as brought forward having the appearance of a lid only when the performer clasps the lid on the pan the lining is thereby introduced but when he again removes it the lining is left in exposing the folded handkerchiefs while the substitutes remain concealed between the true and false bottoms of the pan the performer of necessity accepts white handkerchiefs only as a colored one would betray the secret from the absence of its double among the substitutes some performers in order to obviate the suspicion which might be suggested by an evident preference of white handkerchiefs arrange that a colored one of which they possess a duplicate shall be offered by a confederate among the audience this certainly heightens the effect of the trick as it seems to negative the idea of substitution and though in general we deprecate as belonging to a low class of art the employment of confederates this is just the case in which the use of such expedient may for once be deemed admissible the egg and the handkerchief for this capital feat which is generally identified with the name of colonel studare the following are the requirements a glass goblet two small handkerchiefs generally of plain crimson silk and about sixteen inches square a larger silk handkerchief to which is attached by a silk thread of about four inches in length a blown eggshell and a hollow metal egg made of zinc enameled white with an oval opening on one side of it measuring about an inch and a half by one inch or a little more the performer comes forward having in his right hand the goblet and one of the red silk handkerchiefs the larger silk handkerchief is thrown with apparent carelessness over the other hand and upon it rests the blown egg so placed that the thread may be out of sight while beneath the egg concealed in a fold of the handkerchief lies the second red handkerchief rolled up into as small a compass as possible the metal egg is meanwhile placed in the left-hand secret pocket of the performer who introduces the trick as follows i have here ladies and gentlemen a drinking glass a couple of silk handkerchiefs and an egg all as you will perceive of the most ordinary description he passes quickly in front of the audience as though tendering the articles for examination taking care however keep his right arm advanced towards the spectators so that the glass and small silk handkerchief may bear the brunt of inspection and finally places the glass and small handkerchief on a table or chair in full view pray observe he continues that not one of the articles is removed from your sight even for one moment now please follow me closely i will place the egg in the glass and cover it over with this handkerchief this he does by one movement for as the egg is already lying on the handkerchief a mere turn of the wrist places the egg in the glass and at the same time lets fall the handkerchief over it and at the same time the smaller handkerchief which was concealed in the larger is released and falls into the glass with the egg you have all seen me place the egg in the glass at the same time shaking the glass to show by the sound that the egg is still there which i will not again touch i shall now take this small handkerchief the one which has remained on the table and standing as far as possible away i shall command the handkerchief to dissolve and pass into the glass and the egg which is now in the glass to come into my hands 
so saying he holds up the handkerchief in such manner as to show indirectly that he has nothing else in his hands taking a few steps as though merely to get further from the glass and holding the handkerchief hanging down between the finger and thumb of the right hand he drops the other hand to his side and secretly takes from his pocket the hollow egg which he palms keeping the opening outwards he then standing with his left side towards the spectators joins his open hands as in figure one hundred fourteen the handkerchief hanging down between them requesting the audience to watch him narrowly that they may be quite sure that there is no deception he begins to wave his joined hands slowly up and down the second and third fingers of the right hand which it will be remembered is away from the audience meanwhile gradually working the handkerchief into the hollow of the egg he every now and then pauses to show that the handkerchief is gradually diminishing and at last when it is wholly worked into the egg opens his hands and shows the egg lying in his palm taking care of course that the opening is undermost to all appearance the handkerchief has changed into an egg here is the egg he remarks let us see if the handkerchief also has obeyed my biting so saying he lays the egg still with the opening downwards upon the table and taking hold with the finger and thumb of the handkerchief which covers the glass lifts it daintily up carrying with it concealed in its folds the eggshell attached thereto and leaving the duplicate red handkerchief lying in the glass it may sometimes though not very often occur that one or other of the spectators suspecting some peculiarity about the egg may ask to be permitted to examine it this of course you cannot permit while to refuse would destroy half the prestige of the illusion fortunately there is a way out of this difficulty which absolutely enhances the effect of the trick you would like to see the egg you reply by all means it is a special feature of my entertainment that all articles used therein will bear the strictest examination here is the egg during these few words you have taken up the sham egg with the fingers of your right hand taking care of course to keep the opening away from the audience and have thence apparently transferred it to your left with which hand you offer it to the too curious spectator it is hardly necessary to remark that in the apparent transfer of the egg to the left hand you have really palmed it in your right and as you extend the left hand to the spectator you quietly drop it from the right into the pochette on that side the inquirer holds out his hand to receive it pray examine it closely you say opening your empty hand over his own what you have not got it ah that is your fault you are not quick enough i always find that this experiment makes the egg excessively volatile this unexpected denouement never fails to raise a laugh against the individual who has sought to embarrass you while the impromptu disappearance of the egg will be regarded by many as the most marvellous portion of the trick the same expedient will be equally available to prevent the examination at an awkward moment of other small articles there is another method in which the trick is performed with handkerchiefs borrowed from the audience in this case two metal eggs like that above described are used the blown egg being dispensed with the performer commences the trick by borrowing two handkerchiefs a lady's handkerchief and a larger one preferably of silk these he places on his table secretly exchanging the smaller one for a substitute of his own and retires for a moment to fetch a glass he takes advantage of his momentary absence to insert the handkerchief of which he has gained possession into one of the hollow eggs and returns with this egg lying the opening downwards on his left palm the other hand holding the glass while the second hollow egg is concealed in his left pochette coming forward to the audience he picks up and passing the larger handkerchief from the table 
and handing the glass as forming the principal portion of the apparatus for examination throws the handkerchief over the hand which holds the egg showing by its outline beneath the silk that it has not been removed and meanwhile drawing out with the finger and thumb of the concealed hand the handkerchief hidden therein which is ready to be placed in the glass along with the egg under cover of the larger handkerchief the rest of the trick proceeds as already described save that in this instance the egg not being attached to the outer handkerchief it is necessary to clip it with the fingers through the handkerchief when the latter is removed to do this easily and efficiently it is well in placing the egg in the glass to place it with the opening upwards the edges of the opening giving a readier hold than the unbroken surface of the opposite side the hand box for vanishing a handkerchief while discussing the subject of handkerchief tricks we must not omit to mention the hand box a clever little contrivance for causing the disappearance of a handkerchief it consists of a little tin box of the size and shape of the heel of a gentleman's boot closed on all sides save that which answers to the front portion of the heel which is left open See figure one one five to one of its sides is riveted or soldered a steel spring about an inch in length the free end of this spring forms with the side of the box a sort of clip by means of which the box can be attached as shown in the figure to the fleshy part of the hand the opening being towards the fingers being within the hand it is of course unseen by the audience the manner of its use is much the same as that of the hollowed egg described in the last trick save that the hand box is never exhibited as soon as the handkerchief is fairly worked in the left hand is closed as if containing it the effect being to the audience as if the handkerchief was merely rolled up and placed in the left hand on opening the hand the handkerchief is found to have disappeared the performer having meanwhile plenty of opportunity to drop the concealed handkerchief box and all into the pochette on his right hand side the hand box may be made available in a variety of ways as follows the performer having borrowed a handkerchief secretly changes it for a substitute which he leaves in full view on the table having made what disposition he pleases of the original he returns meanwhile placing the hand box in position and causing by its means the disappearance of the substitute orders the borrowed article to be found in such place as he may think proper End of section 28